It should be no surprise the superhero genre has been dying off like Jinko jeans, with most flops losing enough money to buy a small island nation. Now here we are with yet another, possibly legendary, financial failure, mostly due to the director's negative comments. But is it that simple? Let's find out. Blue Beetle follows the recent college graduate Jaime Reyes returning to his home in Palmera Keys, where his family has fallen on hard times. With his father having suffered a heart attack, lost his mechanic shop, and soon their house, Jaime and his sister... Chalupa, look for work and get promptly fired. It's not a total waste, though, as Jaime gets the number of Henny Cord, niece of the former owner of Cord Industries, who asks Jaime to meet her tomorrow for a job opportunity. The next day, unbeknownst to Jaime, Henny entered Cord Industries' research building before him and found the Scarab, an alien technology that Henny's aunt and Cord Industries' CEO, Victoria Cord, plans on using to create her own army of Robocop Beetleborgs. The alarms are tripped. Henny then gives gives Jaime the Scarab, who takes it home, and after opening the box out of curiosity, the Scarab attaches itself to Jaime and does the usual rigmarole of the hero first receiving and using his powers. This puts him and his family in Victoria's crosshairs. Now he must step up to the plate to defend those he loves and stop Victoria in this coming-of-age tale. Wait a minute, that was a definitive summary, not a satirical breakdown. What's going on, Albelio? Yeah, weird, isn't it? If you don't know me, I like to break down the movies that are trash and summarize those that are not. So for Blue Beetle to receive a summary from me should be more surprising than an honest politician. This doesn't mean Blue Beetle is without fault, as it's a mixed bag like Birdie Bot's ever flavor beans. For every positive, there is a negative, which makes reviewing Blue Beetle annoying to say the least. Let me explain. Since the film prioritizes family, let's start with the cast. Jaime is a bright-eyed and hopeful young man looking to help his family. He feels like he's failing them since a job isn't guaranteed after college, but his father's teachings encourage him to keep working hard. He grows and learns to become the hero he was chosen to be, which is something that many hero movies today often overlook. The father, Alberto, is the anchor and moral compass of the family, pointing Jaime in the right direction. He's great helping Jaime to become the man he needs to be, and is probably the most consistent character in the entire movie. Rudy, played by George Lopez, is the surprise of the movie because he didn't make me want to eat my cushion in frustration. Shy of the occasional disagreement, he's the most based character calling out companies that project a facade of care, love, and progress at the cost of everyone below the highest tax bracket. Most of his jokes don't land, being brought up at the wrong times like a fart at a funeral, but when push comes to shove, he really steps up to give his two cents. One of the worst characters in the movie is also the worst in the family, and that's the sister. If Lopez is the funny guy, then the sister is a comedic stormtrooper. Awful timing, annoying as shit, and she's got that 2010s Disney teen act acting going on. For example, during the raid on the Reyes' home, after Jaime saves the family, the sister falls down and it looks like a rehearsal. I never would have imagined you could make the Friday the 13th trope look good, but in comparison to those women, they should win an Oscar compared to this bean burrito. The rest of the cast are negligible and barely worth a remark, shy of Henny, who isn't insufferable and does her best to support Jaime and his family without hogging the spotlight. The writing, like everything else, can be pretty messy at times. As mentioned before, family is the core theme which most characters are built upon and remains a constant throughout the film. You know what else is constant? The autistic screeching like you just correctly gendered someone. When the Scarab first attaches to Jaime, the family understandably freaks out. Then again when he returns. And again during the raid of their house. And again in the final battle. It doesn't help that I know a pathetic amount of Spanish. Like, I could order a chicken fajita, sure, but without a remote to hit the SAP button, I was so lost I felt like I was turning into a skull kid. And it doesn't end there. The characters won't shut the fuck up even when they're fighting. I appreciate that Jaime is a bona fide good kid, but bro, he's about to get his head crushed and he's still apologizing. Were your balls part of the payment for college? What's going on? I don't like that writers believe talking over a fight needed to be a thing, and it desperately needs to end. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the story weakens over time, with a building reliance on convenience to push the plot along. The raid on the family results in Jaime getting captured, 
but the family and Henny are left alone, despite their knowledge of Court Industries and Victoria's intent. Henny walks in and obtains the Scarab with no concern for security guards, cameras, passcodes, or anything else, despite the obviously unique alien technology just lying on a table for anyone to grab. There is also this nasty habit for the movie to shift tone like a pregnant girlfriend. When Jaime returns after the suit finishes calibrating, Jaime is understandably freaked out and wants to find Henny for answers. Meanwhile, his family is freaking out, wanting to call the police and demanding answers, and then starts singing an opening theme of a kid's show in unison. It's as out of left field as it sounds, and while not often, the movie does have these moments ruining the emotional buildup of the scene before settling down. Even the politics occasionally switch back and forth like a swing state. On the one hand, yes, woke elements are abundant, like the villain being a rich white person, while the good people are all darker than a tortilla. On the other hand, the film is oddly based, mocking a college degree as equivalent to toilet paper and hating big government. For example, five minutes in and Jaime puts on his graduation cap in preparation for meeting his family. He turns and asks the older fella behind him how he looks, and the guy responds, you look like you're six figures in debt. Which got a good laugh out of my lady and I, but at the same time, the infamous Batman is a fascist line exists, so take it as you will. The best way to describe it is socially, the film leans pretty hard left while economically leaning right, which amounts to more center of left with the addition of the director's intentions and tipping of the scale. I didn't know what the director's comments were until after the film. As I mentioned in a response to one of my subscribers, Subscribers, shout out Brancliffe, I fly by the seat of my pants, only ever playing catch up with how much time it takes to make one of these videos. So I don't often watch others to stay up to date on entertainment news until days or even weeks later. So learning the director Angelo Soto openly hates this country and attacked fans online for daring to question his movie just from the trailers, I can see why this movie is probably going to lose a hundred million dollars. So with a mixed bag of mostly weak characters, writing, politics, and more, the lack of Blue Beetle's recognition, superhero fatigue brought on by terrible movies, the soon-to-be reboot of the entire franchise rendering this and all DCEU films irrelevant, and a director who hates you? Of course Blue Beetle isn't going to perform well financially. I think that's a shame, too, since Blue Beetle overall, while a bit weaker of a movie, is still a serviceable little superhero film. The heart and passion are there, but buried, and you'll hear, if you haven't already, the claim that this is the best comic book film since whatever, and that's probably technically correct since the DCEU has been the equivalent of Marvel's Phase 4 almost since the beginning, while Joker and Batman are considered separate canons. And with Aquaman 2 closing out this year, it makes me wonder how DC is supposed to recover enough money for the reboot later when no one gives a shit about their characters now. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.